So just about 24 hours ago, Francisco Lador was traded to the New York Mets. Now, now that it's been 24 hours, I want to look at the winners and losers of this trade. Now, I'm doing a whole separate video. I usually do it in my reaction video, but I want to do a whole separate video for Francisco Lador because it's that big of a trade. So that's what we're going to do in today's video. Leave a like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and let's go ahead and get into this video talking about the winners and losers. Now, it doesn't have to be a certain team involved. Like, I'm not going to just do losers or the Mets, for example, winners or Cleveland. I'm not going to do that. That's boring, and it's going to be a two-minute video. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at some winners and losers in this video. Before we get into this video, though, 68% of you that watch these videos are not subscribed. Get your life together. Hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, leave a like on this video. And let's go ahead and get into this video. Let's go ahead and start off with the losers, unfortunately, for the losers. First team is the Toronto Blue Jays. Now, it was down to the Blue Jays or the Mets. We heard that about a week before the trade happened. But the Blue Jays, there's going to be a whole other video coming out about them soon. But the Blue Jays definitely could have used Francisco Lindor. And it seemed more and more like it was a possibility that Francisco Lindor to the Blue Jays was going to be an option because Francisco Lindor would have fit pretty well with this team. Now, it would have maybe... If you're the Blue Jays, you were thinking, we didn't want to move Bichette or Biggio to third base, which I can understand, but I think they could have, either one could have played pretty well at third base. This is a, I don't really know what they would have gave up here, which is, I mean, they could have gave up a Simon Woods Richardson or Jordan Grosshans, but I mean, look at who they got from the Mets. Like, you wonder what really were they willing that they had besides a Simeon Woods Richardson or a Jordan Grosshans. You have to look at that. Did they have anything besides that that they were willing to give up? I mean, you could have gave up a Randall Grichik, but, I mean, Randall Grichik doesn't have a lot of value to a team. So, the Blue Jays are definitely losers here. Next team's the New York Yankees. They're a loser. Their rival gets Francisco Lindor. That's one loss for them. That your rival, I mean, you don't want your rival to get Francisco Lindor. That's simple. And the other reason why they're losers is because last offseason, he was supposed to go to the Yankees. And the Yankees seemed to be favorites last offseason. But they were not able really to pursue him just because they did have so much money already on the contract, contract book with James pa Paxton, which is now off the books. But they have Jay Happ, Garrett Cole, Giancarlo Stan, Aaron Judge. And you have to re-sign D.J. L. Mayhew. So it really just wasn't realistic for the Yankees to get him. But your rival gets him. And that's really where your biggest loss comes in here. And, yeah. Next team's L.A. Dodgers. They can't build that super team. I mean, they still have a pretty good team. Don't Let's not get it screwed. They won the 2020 World Series. But this would have been a move for the Dodgers to still be as – be up there with the Padres because the Padres are ahead of them this offseason. This would have been the move to kind of just catch up with the Padres, catch up with what they were doing. But they did make the move. You had the assets to trade for Francisco Lindor. That is not a question. You could have traded them A.J. Pollock, Gavin Lux, and that would do it. I mean, Gavin Lux would be a main piece in that trade, obviously, because they didn't get a Gavin Lux back. The Mets did and for the Dodgers, they're losers here um, because the NL continuously gets better. And the Dodgers are, have not got better this offseason, really. Yes, they re-signed Blake Trinan, but that doesn't make your team a whole lot better, if we're being honest. Next team is the Chicago Cubs. And the Cubs really had no involvement at all with this trade. But here's the thing with them. Chris Bryant, Wilson Contreras, some big trade pieces for them are on the trade block, it seems like. And this really shows what the value is this year. And that's not anywhere good for the Cubs at all. These players that they have, Wilson Contreras, Javier Baez, Chris Bryant, all have value. But Chris Bryant's contract is up next year, I'm pretty sure. And this shows that the trade value is very low and it doesn't look like you're going to be getting a lot back for Chris Bryant after his 2020 season. And that's why they come in as losers in this trade. Um, yeah. Next losers is the whole NL East besides the Mets, obviously the Phillies, the Marlins, the Braves and the Nationals are all losers here because you have to face Francisco Lindor and Francisco Lindor is going to be a pain in the butt to any National League team. That is not much of a question. 
But this makes the division even tougher. And I think the biggest losers, if I'm being honest, out of the NL East is the Washington Nationals. This team, they they look like they're probably a third-place team, even though they could be a very good team and could even be a wild-card team, which I think they won't be. I think they'll end up missing the playoffs, but that's just because you're in a very tough NL. I think we all can agree that the NL is way tougher than the AL this year. And next loser is the Cleveland baseball team. This was not the expected return that I was thinking. I was thinking more of Andres Jimenez, Brandon Nemo, and that would, and maybe a, a couple other prospects, but that would be about it. But wow, this is not what I was expecting for a return for the Cleveland baseball team. Now, I just don't think they got Francisco Lindor's value back. Now, I know you can say, yes, they were going to lose him in free agency. And I said that too in my reaction video. I said that, yes, you were going to lose him for nothing, so get whatever you can for him. But I think you still could have got a little bit more for him here. I, I, I'm just not the biggest fan of this. And, yeah, that's just my opinion. Now, let's go ahead and get to some winners. Our first winner is the San Diego Padres here. The Padres are winners in this trade because he didn't go to the Dodgers. That he does not go to the Dodgers makes the Padres a winner here. That he didn't go in division. That he didn't go into the in the division. The Giants could be winners here, you could say. The Rockies could be winners here. Any team in the NL West besides the Dodgers could be a winner here. In my opinion, you could they could be considered as a winner. Next is the Baltimore Orioles. The Orioles have absolutely no tying into this trade. But how they are a winner in this trade is because they do not have to face Francisco Lindor in their division, whether it went to the Yankees or the Blue Jays. And that's a really big win for them. The Orioles are already bad enough. They don't need Francisco Lindor in their division. Next is the Boston Red Sox. This is big for the Red Sox because this AL East is already tough enough. And for the Red Sox, you've got you've got to be pretty happy that he didn't go in division because if he went in division, the Red Sox are even in more trouble. And I would project them as like a fourth-place team still right now, which is not very good with the roster they have. They have a lot of good roster pieces. But the fact that Francisco Lindor did not go in division is great for the Red Sox. Another winner, Tampa Bay Rays. The Rays definitely are winners here because the Blue Jays and Yankees, their two biggest rivals in the, in the division, did not get Francisco Lindor. You have to be happy that you do not have to face Francisco Lindor, especially when you traded your best pitcher this offseason over Kevin Cash, which is, I, you know, it's not – Great, but still, the Rays can still win this division, and it makes it great that the Blue Jays are not really doing that well this offseason. The Yankees have done nothing this offseason. Both have really failed miserably this offseason, I would say. And our final winner is the New York Mets. The Mets are winners here, definitely, because they got Francisco Lindor and Carlos Carrasco, and many people predict that Francisco Lindor will stay with this New York Mets team for most – or close to the rest of his career, we could say, to his 33-34 age season. So, Francisco Lindor, I I think is in – I don't really even think he's, like, hit his prime ages yet, you could say. I think he's, like, 27. I don't really think he's hit his prime age yet. Um, let's see here. He is 27. So, he's really not really even hit his prime – Really, if we're being honest, um, wow. Like, he's just not even really hit his prime yet, and the Mets get him. And I would say you could look at a six, seven-year extension here for, I mean, you're he's going to be getting 200, 250 million bucks. I mean, that's not a question, I don't think. He's going to be getting a bunch of money, and the Mets, with new owner Steve Cohen, can definitely pay him. So those are my winners and losers of the Francisco Lindor trade. Maybe you guys disagree. I don't know. But, yeah, that's going to be the end of this video. Leave a like, subscribe, turn on notifications. Thank you for watching, and peace.